Let's talk about this with historian and author Martin Whittock, who kindly joins us now. Good morning to you, Martin. Good morning to you. Thank you for joining us. Um, big fuss about this. I mean, it's all over the media, front page of a couple of newspapers. Um, how serious is this? I mean, I'm assuming that there are thefts at you, you, uh, museums uh, fairly commonly. Well, clearly it's shocking. Uh, but what it reminds us is that every museum, particularly a world-class museum like the British Museum, has a huge backstock, a huge amount of items that never go on display. Yeah. But they're important because they're there for research, they're there for travelling ex exhibitions, they're there for um, occasionally they're loaned by the people as well. And it's very, very difficult to keep a tight control of these, as you can imagine. Yeah. A few years ago, for example, I needed to see or requested to see a, a, a very rare Anglo-Saxon silver penny in the British Museum, which was accepted. And I went through all the security protocols and I took up my, um, my ID and I was shown it by a member of staff in a secure environment and we discussed it but the point was i was an outsider it's yeah. always harder to police people inside yeah. now that doesn't mean to say you could be complacent but there was i i came i went i went away i left the coin behind yeah. you'll be really they, they, they checked that it was still there when yeah, you left it, and that's it, the it, thing it, isn't it because i mean in well, all the public areas there'll be cctv everywhere and people are checked going in and out and all of that but again with its staff we don't know whether this was a senior member of staff a very junior member of staff maybe a security guard. we we don't know the identity we understand the police investigation is ongoing we may find out in 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 in, uh, in coming weeks or months but when we talk about some irreplaceable items I mean, to a certain extent anything like this is irreplaceable the, yeah. these are individual artifacts um and, I, and i'm not saying look of course museums matter of course as you say there are many many items that are, are are really important historical value for research but some of these will be things that are very similar to other artifacts that, that are never seen in public realistically would anyone have ever noticed if, if if we didn't find out about it, it wasn't on the front pages because these are probably items we'd never have seen well, that's a very good question. Obviously, there will be security protocols. People will sign items in, they'll sign yeah. items out. But obviously, when you're inside, you can help yourself, I guess. And, and the sad thing about this is it erodes trust. Yeah. As, as a purist, you know, as, as a museum uh, aficionado, uh, the answer is you know, everything is unique, you know, everything is crucial, everything is priceless. But as a member of the public, it will no doubt be, you know, another Roman intaglio, you know, a, a, another another Victorian brooch, you know, a, 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 another me medieval ring. Now, I'm not dismissing that at all. It's really, really important. They're part of the national treasure. But probably the average citizen is not going to miss their use. But researchers will. Um, and yeah. the other thing is you never know what use you'll need of something in the future yeah. and that's the whole point museums are repositories they're repositories of yesterday for today and for tomorrow and not only that they're national repositories so even though nobody may miss it it's not for anybody to put it on ebay if yes. you see what I mean. well that's it a lot of people are asking you know, how would you go about you know, getting rid of this stuff i mean you know you're, are you stealing it and you're keeping it at home they're saying they're trying to recover it so presumably they you know it's not sitting in someone's you know spare room the boxes of this stuff that's been taken um, how would you go about selling something like this it only has value as a historical ar artifact in which case, you know, what's its, uh, uh, you know, where, where does it come from? If people are going to be asking who are buying this stuff, you know, they, they want to know, certificated that it's genuine. At that point, you're going to have to admit it's stolen from the British Museum. Well, there's a widespread trade in ancient artefacts and antiquities. As we saw, for example, when a huge amount came onto the international market following the invasion of Iraq yeah. uh, after 2003 and the, the disaster in Syria uh, much more recently. But the thing is, you're not likely to see this on an auction site near you yeah. anytime soon. And if you log on to eBay now and, and put in the search engine, nicked British Museum rings, you're not going to turn up anything. <laughs> But the sad thing is there are people out there with a lot of money who are prepared to buy this kind of thing for their own enjoyment, yeah. their own interest. And you're right, it won't go on display, but somewhere in a very wealthy person's home, somewhere, there will be a case and they'll take it out and show it to their friends and they may be a little bit coy when asked... About where it's come from. from. Now, I have, to ask, I have to ask you this as well because there's been quite a lot of uh, ironic eyebrows raised with the criticism of the British Museum over the Elgin marbles, the uh, you know the the, I mean, the, the Parthenon uh, sculptures, because the um, the you know, Greece regards as having been stolen from them in the British Museum, and for the British Museum saying we've had stuff stolen, we want we want to get our stuff back. Um, the, the irony is 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 blatant and out there for everyone to see, isn't it? 
Yeah, 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 sadly is. I mean, to be fair, the Elgin Marvels were legally acquired in the 19th century, but I know there's a lot of debate that goes with that. But yes, it will seem to be strange that obviously, on one hand, these are definitely not going to leave the British Museum. But on the other hand, there have been a few items that have gone out through the back door. And obviously, the British Museum will be very aware of this this morning and taking this very, very seriously. And the sad thing is, security protocols will have to be increased yeah. because of this, which means honest researchers, honest conservators, who every day go in and follow the rules, follow the procedures, follow the protocols, will have to fill out things in triplicate, be yeah. watched, be observed. It's like everything that happens, you know, when something happens with neg medical negligence, for example, you know, 99, you know, 999 people have to go jump through the hoops yeah. because one person abuses trust. And that's the tragedy of this, really. Absolutely. As well as the loss of the items themselves, it's what it does to relationships too. Martin Witter, what a pleasure to speak to you, sir. Thank you so much.